Great. Did you enjoy the city? Good. Good for you. Well, um, you, you, I don't know if every one of you knows already Neus. Yes, we Neus, more or less. Uh, she had been in Fort Lee mm -hmm. with some of you. Uh, Lydia is over there. It's uh, taking care of the library and the Institute of Research. We are, uh, let me introduce the people working in here first. We are eight people plus one, and I'll explain. In these people, we have four people at the reception desk because we have a very long journey, a very long days, so they, they don't have full day time, they, they are uh, sharing. Uh, then we have two people here in the library and the research center. And we, uh, nowadays we are two at the administration, direction and so, and we have uh, also one of the ladies taking care of the maintain of the local and uh, technical aspects. And I say eight plus one, because that plus one is since two years ago, we have the director of the museum, is also the, the director of the Museum of the History of the City. So instead of being part of the uh, people working for the Patronat Call de Girona, is part of the city council, and it's uh, having the direction of the museum as well, okay? So who we are? We are what we call Patronat Call de Girona. Patronat Call de Girona is a, uh, is a public organization that belongs to the city of Girona, but also has as patrons the, uh, the, the Diputació de Girona, which is a kind of county council, so mayor hoods of all, all over the country, all over the, the region, and we do have La Generalitat de Catalunya, which is the local government. So the three of them are the partners. And why we decide to uh, organize ourselves at the very beginning, when nothing was done in, in the city, as a different um, organization and, and separate from the city council. Because the first reactions and the first guessings that we got here and then around the world, uh, we uh, decided and was clear for us, for ourselves, that if we were a museum and organization just included in the city council, we uh, we will not have the right to arrive to send certain organizations that we were willing to or uh, getting some money from other foundations because foundations are not going to give money to the city council. They go give money for the projects, but not for the city council. City council is the too large organization and if once the money gets there, they are the ones who decide where the money goes. You know the problem. So, so that's why we decide to be uh, a part of that and create that organization. And at the very beginning, it was very, very humble, it was alone myself uh, at the very beginning. I'm talking about uh, the 80s. And also you have to recall the political situation of this country uh, 30 years ago, oh, 35 years ago. So we, we came out from the Franco dictatorship. Uh, the, the country was opened up uh, uh, in a new democracy status. Uh, this area was like the better or the worst part of the city. No one uh, was uh, willingly living here in, in the area because it was obscure, but not a, um, a tasty place to go. And uh, so when the uh, first democratical uh, councils took place and they start to work, they uh, create one of the, what we call el pla de rehabilitació del barri vell, a rehabilitation plan for the city, mainly for the old section of the city. And this area starts to change, not only due to the, to the reports and the efforts of the city council, but also because at the same time, uh, citizenship and population, let's say, a wealthy population of Girona, decides to take benefit of this area and start to buy properties and start to renew uh, renewal properties and rehabilitate properties. And slowly, the area starts to change a little bit. So it was in this framework, in this period, where we came into this place, we bought a house, this house where you are in right now, was completely destroyed. 
I remember big holes on the floor going through three floor levels. It was a disaster. The people, I, the people, the, 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 the construction mill itself has to be uh, consolidated. You have here some of the images of what we got when we came in and what it is today. So at the beginning, we thought that we got a, quite a big amount of money to do the whole project. And we spent the whole money here in stones and building and refurbishing. Uh, it was really too bad. 500 years without taking care of a building has a cost. And, and that's what we realized. And why we start this project? Because before any, everything was started, um, we knew that we got a Jewish history passed in the Girona completely on the oblivion, completely forget for, for the majority of the people. I'm not talking about the academia, of course. I'm not talking about some research people. But let's say for the 99% of the population, no idea, no, uh, even the, the smaller idea that Girona got the Jewish past on the medieval time. Spain go through the Inquisition, go through the the decret of expulsion, 1492, and after that time, Jews were asked or to change the religion, become Christians and living in the area, or go away and um, to do the diaspora to other places. So since that time, of course, the history of the place was uh, changing and this area had been habitated, but up to the certain point, it was inhabited. And that was what we came in, we find out. And looking around, we say, listen, Girona has something that today, and I'm talking like 30 years ago, nobody else has around. Barcelona has a very important Jewish history, but Barcelona didn't open up this history at that time. So we say, if we do a circle of 100, 150 kilometers around the city, nobody else has Jewish history developed. So let's do it. Let's be the first ones. Let's start a project that has um, a specificity, has something that the other doesn't have. So that can be also a way to help to become this city a kind of um, place for tourists. When, when, like 30 or 40 years ago, not that long, on Sunday, Girona was completely closed. Not a single restaurant open, no one. Why? Because we are very near to the coastline, it's 15 kilometers away to the coast. We're very near to the Pyrenees Mountains, ski racers and so. So what happening? That at the... Uh, and on Friday evening, everybody was looking around and was uh, going out, and uh, Monday morning, life starts again. So it was nothing, was no way to have a restaurant, no way to have an hotel with a restaurant open. So, and I'm, I'm talking just 40 years ago. So then slowly that starts to change. Tourism, of course, it's a big um, engine, a big tool to attract people to a city. So we start to play this role of let's open a, a center of research because if we want to open a museum, we must know what we are talking about and we must know what do we have, really, what do we have about the, the subject we are talking about. And so the first thing to open was this institute with the library, with the research, and doing that, developing this project. The second thing we did, we make an agreement through Israel and Spain, the state of Israel and the state of Spain, because both, they have an, a cooperation agreement that almost nobody knows by now, but it was useful because at that time, it was no a diplomatic relationship yet between the two states. So we kind to we start to open something that was completely new, completely unknown, and so we took benefit for that because we had been the, the one of the first um, people to ask for help, and but 
Saying so, I mean, we had been very clear in our mind always that the direction, the, the way, the path to follow has to be directed by ourselves. And we are not Jewish ourselves. So we are dealing with a theme which doesn't belong culturally to ourselves properly, but we can study and that's why we make that cooperation agreement. And we ask Israel for help. So at the very beginning, they send on their coasts, on their side, they send us a, a, a person, uh, a technician, a very high technician, to help us to develop the idea of how the museum has to be, um, how the narratives of the museum must be, and, and so and so. And we start to work in cooperation. But very soon we realize that this uh, project has to be done not only by historians uh, and academia, but also we had to involve the architects, the designers, so everyone else involved on the project. Because the, the building itself was too complicated to uh, work alone in this sense. So we create a kind of task force, we start to work all together, and then whatever the others say was a kind of, uh, it was not an executive uh, issue, but was an advertising issue. So finally, politically, because uh, if we belong to the city, the city at least is backing all, all this thing, so finally we, we go through this. Also I must say that for a, for a long time, uh, 20 something years, we got the same mayor. And that was a help, because that mayor, also, uh, Mr. Nadal, was a historian himself. So he was open to the stones and to the history, and he knew the value of what we were doing. So we had the support of the city in, in this aspect. Then organically, we had been going through different uh, departments of the city council, but more or less we always find out our way at least uh, at the end. So. Uh, another important thing is uh, we've been through, and I'm telling this because that was something that happened to us at the beginning of the project, and I learned it's a good lesson to be learned, was that nobody cares about the Jewish, Jewish uh, uh, neighborhood at the very beginning. So at the beginning, the major part of people, citizens, and uh, people from abroad and Jewish communities from abroad, they were telling us or they were looking at us as, as if we were opening a business. Not a memory place, not an historical place, but a business. And it took us really a long time to change the minds. Uh, I'm always saying that it's faster to rebuild a building, a, a building than to rebuild a mind really takes much more time. I don't know, maybe some of you, you have the same uh, journey through your own, own projects. <laughs> so that complicity was needed. And we had to uh, be creative and look for um, uh, events and activities and to be pedagogics and to do pedagogy about what we were doing and explain everything that we were doing. If the citizenship doesn't understand us means that we are not doing correctly the things that we have to. So it's, it's a two ways around. Then after the reco recovering or recovering the, the project itself, the, the physical recovering that took quite, quite a lot of time, I say it's even not finished because now we are in the process of archaeological diggings in the patios in, and so and this will take uh, a little more time. But uh, let's say more or less the project physically is, um, was finished. We have another point. It's how to deconstruct myths and legends. Myths and legends are like fixed on the land. It's very difficult to uh, take them out. But we have to because we cannot build something on the legends and on the myth. And, and, and that we are in this process now. Again, 
pedagogical issues, pedagogical tools. Try to uh, work with schools, with kids, with families. So be having this, this approach. Then um, the time was passing by and um, we create from here, from the Patronat Call de Girona, we create an association around Spain, all over Spain, called Red de Juderías. It was done 22, 23 years ago. And why we create that? Because Girona, if you look at the map, and now you are here, we are on the corner of the country, up on the north, very far away from Madrid and the central political, the political center of Spain. Uh, I don't know if you, in Cáceres, you have more or less the same problem, but the ones who are, we are not in the middle, um, we don't count. It's like a, it's a kind of different matter, no? So we, in that sense, we start to talk with other cities in Spain that they got a nice history past, and we say, listen, we are doing this in Girona. Why we don't do something together? We start with that idea, just to do... I don't know, a temporary exhibit together or something like this. And that, uh, that was shaping, that was taking a form slowly, and at least we create an association called, called Red de, de Juderías de España. And we start to work together quite well. So it was three cities at the beginning, and when we leave, and I'll explain why we leave, uh, 22 years ago, we were already 24. Then, again, Politics are always in the middle of our itineraries. It's not a secret. So what happened is Catalonia started the process of becoming independent, a failure process up to now. But uh, then the, what, what the cities decide, the major part of the Catalonian cities, was to leave the, that network that we create and uh, to organize themselves apart. So that's a political decision. We must respect them. And as we were working on the City Council of Girona, we move with the City Council of Girona. So we move from the Red de Judrias de España. And at that time, we already, a few years before, we start to work in the European level. So we had been from this place, we had been the ones to push the Cultural uh, Itinerary Institute in Luxembourg to let us in and we start to knock the door, say hello, we are here, we do that. We start uh, the, the, the project that you probably know, the European Day of Jewish Culture. Uh, when we start the project, it was like our presentation, <coughs> say, listen, we are doing this, we are a lot of cities around Europe, that's important for us. The answer of the Institute was, that's a very nice project, that's impressive, but that's one day project, and that's not an itin itinerary, for sure, that, that was a reality. So, okay, so we start to think again, and we start to put together the cultural itinerary. Finally, on 2004, we had been adopted by the Council of Europe, and then we had been working, uh, let's say, on the two sides, uh, Spain in one side and uh, Europe in the other side. And then when all things become and we leave Spain, that was the, I'd say, well, that's our turn to be stronger, to, be, uh, to strain our way in the European section. Because up to that moment, well, doing two, three main projects at the same time, it's not easy. And you don't have, you have 24 hours a day, you don't have more than that. So when we, we had been liberated in one side, we push on the other side. And that was the moment when we hire Victor. We decide mm -hmm. that that itinerary we were talking about and the association that we create, the APJ, has to be deal and has to be faced professionally. Not as a group of volunteers that we've been before doing whatever we, we, we knew and whatever we could, but it was not enough, it was not the way and uh, adding to that, that uh, the European Council, it was more and more and more claiming for professional um, issues and were asking for more uh, 
detail um, everything. So, so we decided it was the time to push uh, and to, to make really, to, to do this effort differently. So um, we have this condition. Now we opened the, the, the office in Barcelona. So already he explained you. You already saw the city, so you know what we are working with. We don't have 100% the, the contribution of the citizenship yet. There is a lot of people of Girona that only knows that there is an existence of the Jewish neighborhood, but doesn't know exactly what that really means. And that's our work that we have to do that, to follow up. And also we have also a very clear conception, and I'm finishing here, that our public, our public is, and it's going to be forever, Jews and non-Jews alike. We are not religious, a religious place. We are not a synagogue here. We, we are working on a cultural level, and cultural means culture, uh, means tourism, means gastronomy, means many other things. So we are in this, in this moment now, how to help our colleagues in the rest of Spain, in the rest of Europe, to go together with an itinerary that can have all the specificities all around. And I must say, as Mark probably told you before, that Catalonia is a very, very rich uh, area with a lot of documentation, with a lot of materials, with a lot of objects, and also a lot of will, political will, to develop this. Because there are a lot of, um, there are many things that approach us to um, different minorities, let me put it this way. Huh? So cultures that they are not the, the majority in the country and they have different aspects that they want to be respected. So at the end, it's a, it's a question of respect, the cultural diversity of a city that has been a multicultural city on the medieval, medieval times, in the Middle Ages, and has went through a process of oblivion. And now, today, nowadays, we are recovering, we are renewal huh? as, a, as a theme of the next uh, European uh, Day of Jewish Culture will be. We are... Um, Restarting again something that can be understood for everyone, Jews and non-Jews alike. And I'm finishing here. I, I give the word and the floor to Neus. She will be much more specifically about some of the projects that in that overall, that fr framework that I tell you, the principal projects that gave us light and gave us also the, the will to follow up with projects and somehow very understood, somehow uh, not that well understood for everybody. <laughs> Thank you, Asuncio. Mm -hmm. Everybody can hear me? Okay. So I'll go back to the museum now uh, with these activities for all. Um, museums are, um, have a social role eh? and we must provide, uh, we must serve uh, all in capital letters, okay? everyone with their abilities. Um, you know that inclusion, accessibility is at the, at the top of the table at this moment, is one of our priorities. But um, here and now, um, I will refer only to one program of activities in particular, which is the educational, as Asuncio mentioned it. Uh, soon after the museum opened the first rooms, 20 years ago, in 2000, uh, we soon uh, saw the necessity the, that um, to provide a service of guided tours was essential, okay? So with our um, uh, small staff and small budget, we need uh, to collaborate with uh, other um, uh, institutions or companies. And in this case, we uh, collaborate with the Association of Local Guides to develop general guided tours for all. It was at the very beginning, okay? Um, this was at first, but later um, through private companies, as we are doing now. Uh, private companies that are specialized in the cultural uh, sector of uh, this uh, tourism. Uh, the current company we work with, uh, which has developed this unraveling Jewish quarter 
that you have experienced, you just got a taste with Mark, is Mosaica. Uh, you know, um, the public administration, we belong to the public administration, is obliged by law uh, to tender um, this kind of contracts, okay? And um, in an open procedure. So the late one who won the contest was Mosaica, and we are uh, developing this, this Unraveling the Jewish Quarter that you tasted, this, uh, the general guided tours program we have for, for uh, the general public. Um, for guided tours, we also have the audio guides available, which is very interesting. It's for all, also in capital letters, because we try to uh, offer the, provide this service um, as, um, in um, so many languages as possible. So far, we have it available in Catalan, Spanish, French, English, and Hebrew. Okay? The audio guides are available from the, uh, our website, so anyone can visit the museum from New Zealand, from home, online, or on site. At this moment, uh, anyone that enters the museum at the reception desk, my colleagues, they offer the possibility to download the audio guides uh, using our free um, uh, wi um, uh, Wi-Fi, Wi-Fi, and you can download on your own device and you visit uh, the museum. The narrative of the audio guide has been revised only two years ago, and it's quite uh, up to date, and we are very proud of this service. And then, um, regarding schools and uh, the educational centers, we, since we did not have, in the beginning, uh, an educational uh, department, and we still don't, 20 years later we still don't, because uh, our structure is uh, small, uh, we have a very limited budget and limited staff. As Asuncio said, we are eight people working here, for only at the reception, um, at the front reception, so we had to uh, find um, alliances as well. So in the beginning we made an agreement with the Depart uh, educational division at the municipality, the, call, the name is La Caseta, small house, and we made an agreement and they developed um, the tours, they hire the educators and we provide them, we train them, okay, so it's a collaboration. Um, they also work with private companies, which change every three, four years, but uh, it's a continu um, we, we provide continu continuous training, so we follow them. Yeah, no, yes, no. With uh, this uh, um, uh, educational division of the municipality, we have developed these uh, two um, uh, programs, the itinerary and this one called Life in the Jewish Quarters. The itinerary after 20 years is still on high demand, so it is a success for us, but uh, it also has failures. Um, actually, our talk is, um, later we can share um, pros and cons and successes and failures. It's a little bit I'm going this way. The itinerary is general, it's a general tour, and many schools from, uh, especially from the county and from the near area of Barcelona, um, are um, reserve, reserving it. It's, it's uh, very interesting for them. Life in the Jewish quarters has uh, not such high demand because it is a, a visit more centered in the uh, inner aspects of the community in the Middle Ages, the Jewish community, more, um, mostly focused in tradition and religion. And since most of the schools here today are secular, um, it's Mm, it is, it's, uh, it's a little bit a problem, but also it's an opportunity that we, 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 can't, we don't want to abandon this program because today it's a reality that most of the schools are very multicultural. So it is an opportunity to talk about, to dialogue about the, the different religions and uh, it's very interesting. And, uh, no, I, well, yeah, can you go back to the, the, previ the previous one? Yes. So the itinerary, the itinerary, the life in the Jewish quarters, and the previous one, please. Sorry, the, we made it very quick. And later we developed that one, Girona Ciutat Jueva, Girona Jewish City. Um, it is a more specific tour addressed to the 14-year-old students, which uh, here um, are at the second year of the mandatory schooling. Um, in the social sciences curricula of this um, academic year, 14 years old, they study medieval history. So since Jewish history is quite missing, 
um, we are a complement to this uh, curriculum. As per the title, Girona Ciutat Jueva, uh, we developed this initiative especially focused to the local centers. Um, since uh, these students, they belong here, okay? So this heritage is theirs and uh, they must feel so. And um, this 14 year old, 14, 16 year old target is very, very special. Uh, they are the future citizens. Um, they, are, they will be responsible for preserving uh, this heritage and continuing the transmission into the future generations. That's why we have to be very, very, uh, we, we have to take a very um, careful care of them, okay? Um, with this project, Girona Ciutat Jueva, ara sí que pots passar la següent l'altra. We developed, uh, we had the opportunity in 2015, uh, while we were part of this network that Asuncio mentioned, the Red de Juderias de España, working in networks, you know the advantages of it. So we had this opportunity to work, um, um, to join our efforts, to share uh, resources and practice, and uh, with two other cities from the area, um, and an exchange was possible, which also is also something very motivating for the, for the young people. Oh, we, we can exchange, you will welcome those, and then you will visit theirs, okay? And this resulted in this project, Com parlar del llegat jueu en els centres educatius, how to talk about Jewish heritage to the educational centres. Our mission from the museum, from the institution, was to help students to prepare um, the, the contents. We were providing contents, we were Going, we, we could go to the, um, the high schools, to the classes, they could come here and um, ask questions and we, we helped them to develop the, um, the profile. And their mission was to host their pairs while visiting the city and to be their guides. This experience actually proved that uh, these young people are, are, are our most um, effective communicators, okay? Empower the young people is key to achieve uh, in the future a, be a better society. And education is the way, actually the, the highway. Um, if we succeed to encourage them to participate, um, they feel proud and confident to have this mission. Um, and they become our best ambassadors, as I said. Moreover, this target, uh, the teenagers, are willing to. Um, they need to be allocated with this responsibility and autonomy. Um, we only need to find the way to seduce them. But once they are with us, it's, it's a success. success. In our case, unfortunately, um, we could not provide continuity to this program because of uh, what Asuncio said and our structure was not strong enough. But we still have on our website this proposal. Now we have changed the name, Objective, the Kyle, the Jewish Quarter, and we propose a collaborative project with um, uh, educational centers. Um, um, yeah, in for Lee, uh, Sarah, Claudia from Atrium, the, the ones you were there, explained about a very interesting uh, similar experience. Uh, which has continuity year after year. I was fascinated, so I asked her about the secret to keep this moving on. And she told me that uh, the Italian law, education law, obliges schools to carry this kind of community service, okay, to provide these uh, social and citizen uh, competencies to students. There's a law that makes this mandatory. Here, uh, we are not yet at this point, as, as far as I know. Uh, despite that's true that some centers are pioneers beginning with this, but n not all in the same, it, it's not consolidated. But, well, we are on the good direction, but we need regulation, okay? Um, so now with uh, the educational activities at the present times, we are at an impasse, we are stuck. We are continuing with uh, things that began in the past, we are keeping them, we are um, improving as, uh, as long as we can, but we are uh, stuck. 
besides policies, regulations and financial support to provide resources, professional staff, um, um, working hours, um, this collaboration depends on other assumptions which unfortunately doesn't depend on us. Schools, for example, we have got very good experiences with some um, professors, but that's true that schools must invest on it as well. Um, allocating professors with extra time, um, sometimes the schedules, our schedules doesn't match. Uh, museums open at 10 and the schools uh, in the afternoon, they cannot come to a meeting, it's complicated. Uh, um, not always everyone is um, available or motivated enough. Uh, that's true that besides the first essential ingredient, which is love, passion, interest, emotion, um, every person, of course, has uh, their own personal circumstances and, and priorities. To sum up, uh, being part of this, uh, the European root of Jewish heritage, and this uh, here, awarded major cultural itinerary of the Council of Europe in 2004, as Asuncio said, makes us um, not to feel alone. Um, it, gives, um, it gives us a, a, the strength to, uh, to feel that we are part of a cultural European community. Um, and this empowers us uh, to push the institutions to keep following in these ways. Uh, we all know, we all also, we all also know that um, these situations are uh, um, cyclical. Cyclical, yeah. Um, a project is born, uh, it grows, evolves, transforms, uh, declines, decays, disappear, but soon after another is born. So we cannot lose uh, our optimism, our energy, um, the will. Um, may run slower or faster, but what is important is that it doesn't stop. So, all of you being here today is an example of this motion. And um, I put, I see, yeah. um, so thank you. Get involved and uh, make our project yours. And uh, we wish to share many more projects with you all. And this is uh, like um, other activities. We do not all do not only carry educational activities. Here at the library, at the institute, there's a series of academic lectures all year round, uh, book presentations, temporary exhibitions at the museum besides the, pre the preservation of the permanent collection. Of course, the, participa the, participa the participation in the European days, in plural, of Jewish culture, activities related to cinema, music, um, regarding the Jewish uh, traditions, Vardik, Ledzma, activities for families and children, very important, another target, and commemorations and celebrations, such as we participate every year in the um, International Day of the Commemoration of the Holocaust in January, or we celebrate Hanukkah as an open festivity to all the citizenship, uh, Jewish and non-Jewish and everybody. That's why the uh, scenario is uh, where um, the, the Plaza del Vi is in front of the municipality, the most public area of the city. And we are very happy that you are here today. Hap what a happy coincidence with the festivity of Hanukkah. And this afternoon you are going to participate. And um, thank you very much. And before I... Um, I had the idea, some CEO, but maybe we don't have time, maybe, or it's just a, an idea for you well, working yeah, this afternoon or tomorrow. Because I think that what I've said, uh, many of you probably experience the same um, pros and cons. And so I thought that we might make a SWOT, S W O T, uh, identifying uh, our. Uh, strengths, our uh, weaknesses, our opportunities, and our threats. And we, if it's a collaborative work, we maybe can identify or make a list, which also give, will give us this strength to push and continue moving on. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.